My name is Dana Abbott. I started martial arts September 16, 1978, right out of college at Arizona State University and moved up to a small town called Prescott, Arizona, as I was the engineering assistant for the engineering department survey. There, I met a guy that was practicing martial arts and I decided, well, I'll follow along with him. And Prescott, Arizona is the same place where Billy Jack did all his movies. So there were a lot of hardcore, good punching and kicking people at that time. So I started learning kick punch known as Korean karate back in the day. At that time, I was probably working at it for about a year until I was introduced to weapons. After I started weapons, I started with a three-sectional staff and went to tolfas and nunchucks and this, that, and the other, but there was something about the wooden sword that when they placed it in my hand, it just vibrated a little different. So from that time, I started working with the sword a lot, which took me to Japan in 1984. At that time, I was just very, very lucky to be able to attend a university called Nihon Taiku Daigaku, known as T Nitai Dai. There, where all the famous martial artists practice. You know, people, if I threw out a name, Sunny Chiba, he went to the school, for example. And in Japan, most all military, fire department, and people who take the art to the next generation study there. What I discovered was is that swordsmanship isn't difficult. It's very simple, but our minds make everything so difficult that it's really, really hard to do. I spent 15 years in Tokyo just learning how to write my name in Japanese correctly, let alone trying to make that simple casting. But now I can cast very, very far. I can fish all day because swinging the sword and casting with the sword is like working with a fishing pole. Why I bring this up is, is because in Japan, martial arts is a way of life and it's applied to everything in your life. For example, if I practiced judo, it wouldn't be because I wanted to trump people and throw them on the ground. It would be because I wouldn't slip in the snow in winter. And if you wanted to play kendo, for example, you wouldn't want to go out there and hit people all the time, but you know that you look at everything around you and you know your surroundings really well. So as a young boy or an older person even, you pay attention to traffic, you pay attention to everything. So when it's one with the sun and your bodies, for example, in Japan, you learn these martial arts, they stay with you until you die. Now, I remember there was a time where I lived for sparring. I really like to spar. But I soon discovered that I was short and my hands, they started giving up. But the minute I went to a Chennai and Kendo, I could spar six foot eight to four foot two people and it still applied the same pressure because if you got a big stick, it's a big equalizer. From those aspects, I started working more and more with the police departments, fire departments, and those aspects because that's where everybody graduates to go to away from teaching in colleges, junior colleges, high schools, and junior high schools. So from there, my martial arts uh, just took its time, went up very, very slowly, just because if you try to do it fast, they'll knock you down. And it was... Uh, 1998, when I moved back to the United States, I had people waiting for me on the tarmac, and we started getting the whole process started. Now, here in the United States, no one wants a fight. No, everybody wants a fight. No one wants to get hurt. And if you try to hit someone with a bamboo sword, they don't like it. So we developed a product called Action Flex that makes these swords that use of course nylon and a little foam on the outside they're all patented so i can hit you as hard as i can you'll have the feeling of cutting through the body but it won't hurt you you only have to wear a helmet for eye protection compared to dressing up like a siamese wicker cat from there we started getting everybody involved into the martial arts as far as weaponry before when a kid had to have focus and he had to be a brown belt or a purple belt to learn weaponry now they can start as a white belt because there's going to be no injuries and by the time they're a purple belt they're on top of it they know real-time martial arts instead of one-third one-third speed theory which a lot of people practice it's really good until they get hit twice and then all of a sudden ever they weren't ready and no one's ready like that so in 2004 i was honored with the with 
becoming part of Black Belt Magazine's Hall of Fame. It's Weapons Instructor of the Year. And from that time on, everybody became my buddy and I started, everybody bought me beer, which is real, real good because in Japan, if you don't drink beer, you don't practice kendo. So from there, over the last 20 years since I've been back in the United States, we're at about maybe 60% of the schools. We make sure that weaponry works well with young kids all the way to older people and the way of the sword is my way of life. 